If you use the X32 or M32 mixing consoles, then you need to have the capability to use the remote app for controlling these mixers. In this video, I'm gonna look at all of the available control options from Mac to PC to iOS, and we're gonna look at the networking requirements to make the whole thing work. Hi guys, I'm Nathan, and welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs. My goal here is to help teams and individuals like yourself to do church and event production with excellence. So network control might actually be the best feature of digital mixing consoles. There's so many benefits like making it easier to rename channels, adjusting the graphic EQs with the touch screen, this is just magic. You can also adjust in your mixes all while not standing behind the console. You can do this from your mobile phone or iPad device anywhere in the room. Or simply use the mobile device to do a line check so you can walk around with, on the stage with your iPad and you can uh, talk into a mic and look and see if you have signal. So for smaller setups, all of your equipment could actually be in a rack on the stage and then you don't even need a front of house position. You can just use the mobile device connected to the Wi-Fi to control the X32 rack mounted in the road case on the stage. The one caveat is that with ProPresenter, I always end up having a front of house position because ProPresenter it's great to have the computer right in front of you and not have to just like use the iPad. iPad control of these programs and apps are great, but it's definitely nice to have the control surface in front of you. So we recently added an X32 rack to our stage at church. This is gonna be used by our front row singers that have the wireless in-ear packs. So previously, this part of the team had to walk across our 80-foot stage, it's really big, to adjust their mixes on the Aviom units. Now, all eight of the backline band members have those same Aviom units, and the four uh, worship team members on the front of the stage are using the app to control their in-ear mixes. They're still using the wireless packs, but their output is now coming from the X32 rack, going straight into their transmitters, and then they're receiving it through their wireless packs. So they also now have access to 32 channels, where before they only had the 16 channels from the Aviom. So the question is, what is the best app for them to use? So that's kind of the core of this video. So to make this work, connect the network port on your M32, X32 console to one of the LAN ports on the router or into a network switch. So assuming that the computer or iPad is also connected to the same Wi-Fi, you should be able to connect to the IP address of the mixer. So I'll talk more about the networking side of getting things working in a bit, but first we have some console control solutions to talk about. So the first way to remotely operate the mixer is the Mac PC application called X32 or M32 Edit. You can find download links on the Behringer and Midas websites. This program gives users capabilities way beyond simply controlling the mixer as we're gonna see with the iOS apps. Each of the applications we're gonna look at has its purpose and the purpose of this program is more engineering than mixing an event. When it comes to mixing your event without a hardware control surface, I think that an iPad solution really is the best option. The X32 edit on the computer is great, but you lose that touchscreen control surface. I know a guy who runs X32 edit from a Raspberry Pi, and he's put together a really genius setup with a couple of MIDI controllers to create a custom control surface. So with that said, without being at the console, this program really is the best way to make changes to the mixer. For me, I only use X32 Edit when I'm making some sort of routing changes to the console or working on a show file offline or getting a file ready for an event like when people hire me to create a custom show file for them for their event. So I have a resource on my website where I will create a custom show file for you for your M32 X32 mixing console. You let me know what instruments and what hardware you have, and then I'll provide the diagram, the patch sheets, and send you the show file so that you can load it onto your console or multiple consoles if that's necessary with your setup. All the routing will be done for you and your event will be ready to go in seconds. So let's take a look at the X32, M32 edit software. To use this program, make sure that your computer is on the same network as the console. On the top right, I'm gonna click setup and then I can see on the connections tab, you can see the mixer on the list. I'm gonna go ahead and click connect on the right side. And now it's gonna ask me a question. Do you wanna transfer content from computer to console or console to computer? This will transfer the entire show file in either direction. So do not click the wrong one. 
you can easily override the scene on the mixer by overriding it from the computer. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. We'll come back to it, but I'm gonna go ahead and open my X32 show file. This is a, another resource available on my store at crazyamazingdesigns.com. This file comes with a patch sheet and once loaded onto your X32 M32, there are channels preset for all of the instruments of a full band. Everything has been pre-EQ'd, gates and compression are all set. Basically, this file is a great way to get started with your console. It also comes with my routing master file. Lots of great information there about how to route audio with the X32. I do want to give a disclaimer that this default show file is different than the where I create a show file for you. That's more of a custom thing. This is more of a general thing. There's still a lot of moving things around to do to set this up for you, but this is a great place to start if you understand more about the X32. But if you're interested in how I create a console file just for you, go ahead and check that out on my resources on my website. So I've disconnected from the console and I wanna load a copy of my X32 show file, the one from my store. So to do that, we're gonna to go to cues in the top right, and then we're gonna go over a tab to scenes, and now we're gonna click import, and now we're gonna find the file on my computer. So now that it's loaded, let's go ahead and rename channel one, which is kick to da hit. I don't know, it's just something. Now, I just wanna point out that you can change any of the routing settings from here. Of course, you also have access to all of the individual channel settings. You have pages for aux, mix bus, matrix, DCAs, uh, effects. There's even the users page where you can select specific channels. So on the right, we can click on different mix buses and then mix them on the left with the channels. The main fader on the right is going to become the master for any selected mix bus, as well as showing you what channels you are mixing by changing all the colors. So now that we have made changes, let's save the scene by going to cues, tab over to scenes, then save scene. We can also connect to the X32 over the network and upload these changes. This is very nice when you want to design a new show file offline and then upload it to the console. So to connect to the console and upload this file, let's go to setup. And now on the connections tab, we can see here our console, our X32 rack is on the network. I'm gonna go ahead and connect on the right side. And once the console is connected, we're gonna be able to see all the settings so this time I'm going to select PC to mixer so that we can upload the changes we made to the console. So now after everything has been uploaded, we can see on my vocal mic that there's audio, which is coming from this microphone up here. Hello. Hello. There we go. So now let's go ahead and switch gears to the iOS apps. When I search X32 or M32 on the Apple App Store, several apps pop up. Each of these can be used to control either the X32 or M32 consoles. So let's take a look at Mixing Station, which is the first app I wanna look at. So I've got this folder here with all of these different apps. So I'm gonna click on Mixing Station. This is an app that people really like. It offers some of the features of the computer-based editing software like custom user pages in the form of an iOS app, which means touchscreen. So it's obviously really good. Uh, to connect to my console, I'm gonna go ahead and click X32, and I'm gonna type in the IP address, and now click connect. I'm just gonna go ahead and continue in trial mode. I'm gonna allow it access. It's gonna go ahead and sync everything to the iPad. Cool, so now I can decide how big I want the buttons to be. Medium's fine. We'll just go with the defaults. What items should be in the channel strip. So you can pick like the different uh, settings that you wanna monitor. Let's just go ahead and pick all the default stuff. So there we go. So now you can see in channel six, uh, is the microphone that's coming into our mixer and I can turn it up and down on the mix. And then on the right, you can click on, on the mix buses. So I'll just click bus one. At the top, you can see all of the thumbnail images on the channel strips and you can see the name of the channel. Cool, so that is that app. Uh, definitely play around with it. The Mixing Station app apparently does cost money. Uh, if it's free to download off the app store, but I have seen users talking about the cost of money. I don't really use that app. But anyways, let's move on to the X32 Mix app. So this is like the X32 version of this app. There's also an M32 Mix, which is pretty much similar. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to this one and that'll go ahead and connect. The M32 mix and the X32 mix, these are the full versions of the app that can control the main left mix, all the mix buses, channel settings, and basically most everything on the console. I can go ahead and control the main uh, mixer on right here by, here's one through eight. If I go to the top here, I've got my four pages of settings, nine through 16, 17 to 24, and 25 to 32. And then I can just go ahead and adjust to those settings. If you wanna click on a specific channel, click on the image, and now we can go over to naming and you can change the image or you can change the name of it, which is really nice because now you have a full touchscreen keyboard that allows you to do that. Very nice. You can invert the graphic color. Uh, if we go over to these settings, you can turn like things like 48 volt phantom power on and off. Uh, you can adjust the gates. You can adjust compression, the EQ. You can send audio to different mix buses. Go back to home and on the sends on faders button, that's where you can actually select a mix bus. So for example, I'm now selecting mix bus one and now I can turn things up and down in mix bus one. And then you can do that for all the mix buses. For the master volume on this app, you have to go over to the mix bus one through eight and bus nine through 16 pages. And now you can turn up the volume for let's say mix bus one, for example. And if you click on it here, you can also link and unlink it. And then, uh, yeah, you can pan it left and right from here also. So this is like the full version of the app. Uh, you can do routing, but you can't do user routing, which is really annoying, but you can adjust everything else, like all the other settings. So there's a lot you can do with this version of the app. There's just not everything you can do. Some of it you gotta kinda do with the computer. Okay, so the M32 Mix app, let's click on that one. It's gonna look very similar because it's just branded for the M32 console instead of the X32 console. Literally does everything the exact same way. Go to routing, I can click on recorder, it's something I didn't mess with. You can see I'm currently recording. Uh, you can click and look at the meters. You can change scenes. You can look at the effects and the different uh, processors that are happening in there. Check, click on channel details of the inputs. And yeah, that's a really cool app. So the M32 and X32 consoles share the same operating system except for the name. So at times I've had issues with the, M with the X32 app, whereas the M32 app seems to work fine. So I don't know, it might have easily been an OS X issue on my end, but now on here I'm noticing that the X32 app is working just fine. So I'm not sure what was going on. So just know that you can jump back and forth between the M32 and the X32 app just fine, it's not a big deal. So if you do have issues with one app, you can jump back and forth to the other if you have issues. Okay, so the next app is the MXQ app. This one is on the main screen because this is the app that we use all the time and we tell our volunteers to download this app which allows them to control just their mix bus mixes on the X32 console and that they are using for their in-ears, but they can just control their mix buses, all the mix buses. They can't control the main left and right mix, which is really cool. You can see that bus one and two are linked. So I'll show a picture, but on our console at church, I have them set up so that it's called the same, each left and right is called the same thing. So it's mix bus one, pack one, or whatever it's called, two, three, four, five. This is the main interface of this app once you get connected to the console. So I'm just gonna hit click on bus one and two. And now you can go over to mixer in the top right and you can make changes. You can scroll left and right and you can make changes to all of these. Uh, you can add and take things away from your in-ear mix. Here's also the main volume control for this mix bus on this MCA page. There's definitely some other features that all of these apps can do but I'm not going into every detail in this video as a video trying to look at all these different apps. Just know that you're gonna to wanna to play around with it, but this is the app that we use for, we recommend to all of our volunteers and people that are using our system. Okay, so the next one is the M32Q, and <laughs> this one works, but it's terrible, okay? This is also a light version of this app, but unfortunately, this light version of this app is mostly on my list as a warning to you not to try and using it, We've had success in using it, so it does work, except the problem is you can't see the channel names. You can see the channel images, but not the names. Also, specifically on iPad, you see here that it's not showing us um, a, an iPad full version of the app. It's kind of designed for phones, so like I can make it bigger and smaller, and you can rotate it. But so if, I'm gonna, if I rotate it here, 
Um, the biggest problem is you can see on the bottom, you can't see the names of the channels. So you can see the pictures, but not the names. So that's not ideal, and that's specifically the reason why I do not recommend using the M32Q app. Go ahead and just do yourself a solid and have your team use the MXQ app. So basically the Mix apps are full versions and the Q apps are light versions designed for mixing Mix buses. That's why this is a great app to give to your volunteers as it does not give them much more control of the X32 than what they need. Specifically, it solves the issue where users forget to tap their specific mix bus and then inadvertently start making changes to the mix of the main speakers. So if you have questions about these apps, please go ahead and share them in the comments. I'd also like to hear about how your church utilizes these apps in your environment. If your questions go beyond the comments, I do offer one-on-one -on -one training sessions over Zoom. So check out crazyamazingdesigns.com to book a session. So that is a list of all of the major apps and programs that I know of to control the X32 without being in front of the hardware control surface. Thank you so much to those of you who watch my content. It helps and I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.